Okay, blood vessels of the torso. You've got two handouts, two purple colored handouts. You have two sides on each one, so it looks like four pages here. Looks like a lot of stuff. Um, the good news is that if you get the first page down here, you've got about 75% of your work done. So let's start with this page that's titled Aorta and its Branches. Okay, Aorta and its Branches. In the picture here, you see I've taken my colored pencils and I've colored in the aorta and um, not colored in all the branches yet. Let's talk about the aorta first. The aorta is the largest artery in the human body. Okay, it's enormous. It's like the trunk of a very large tree where every other branch comes from or is supported by the trunk of the tree. All of the major blood flow through your body happens right here. The heart pumps directly into this. Here's where the heart would be in this picture. Okay, If we took the heart and we set it into the picture, you'd see it right there. Okay? So the heart's sitting right there, and you see this big red tube coming out of the heart right here. And it's making an arch. Okay? And that's this aortic arch. And you'll see one of the three parts here in the diagram, the very first section says aortic arch. That's very important because all of the blood vessels that lead up to your head and your shoulders and your arms, all of those major um, off ramps leading up into those areas come off the aortic arch. Once the aorta makes that turn, it's now what we call the descending aorta. And all the rest of the aorta is called descending, but we do divide it into two parts, the part in the thoracic cavity, and then once it comes through the diaphragm, the rest of it we call the abdominal aorta because of its location. The aorta finally finishes here by dividing into the two common iliacs. And those should be in your brain from our study of the lower limb. Everybody remember that? Common iliacs would then lead to the internal iliacs and inter external iliacs and on into the femorals and on. So the last thing the aorta basically does is divide into the two branches leading to the lower limb. So shaped very much like a walking cane. You know, if you see an old person with a walking cane with a big hook on the end. The aorta arches to the left, too. That's an important thing. You wouldn't go looking for the aorta on the right side of the body. It arches to the left. So the aorta is in three pieces, and let's take each one of these pieces, and I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised by how much you already know here. So let's start with the aortic arch. Here's the uh, part of your diagram. I've kind of enlarged it. Here's the part of your diagram that shows the aortic arch. Now we're going to cross out several of the things on your handout right here. So... Okay, this is going to make things a little simpler. These are sort of some minor tributaries here that aren't real critical to the amount of human anatomy, human anatomy that we need to know. Let's, let's focus then on these other pieces. Anything here that you recognize? Anything here you've seen before? Brachiocephalic should be familiar to you. Subclavian should be familiar to you. Hmm? Internal thoracic should be familiar to you. Exactly. Okay, you've really picked out the ones that are. Now again, remember that the heart is here. Okay? Right? Here's where the heart is sitting. And you can see this big arch and you can see the branches coming off of that up into the shoulders and up into the head. So let's, let's highlight then, and let's maybe color in some of these. Here's the brachiocephalic. This is the one you said you already know. 
Um, there is only one brachiocephalic in the arterial side of things. That's the one coming off here to the right. And then, of course, we said we also know the subclavian. And the subclavian is branching that way. <clears throat> we also have a subclavian coming over here. They both have the letter E on them. I didn't color that one in, but they're both subclavians. And then we said we know the internal thoracic, too. And that's one that's branching from the subclavian early on here and running down inside your thoracic cavity. So three of the ones that are here, I already know. That's pretty good news. Let's look at some of the others then. The common carotid, that term is referring to this branch of the brachiocephalic, right? And that's the one that's leading to your brain and up to your head, okay? All we're going to do is that. Later on, we'll actually look at that and then see all the branches from the common carotid. But for right now, we just want to note that, that the branch from the brachiocephalic that lead, leads to the head is the common carotid. Over here, there's a separate common carotid. Notice on this left side, there's no brachiocephalic, but you do have a common carotid and you do have a subclavian separately. We're going to have branches to both sides of the head and both shoulders. And those are the ones that you see there. So this is the, a new one for you. This little costocervical trunk, which is right here. And again, this is good exercise for you, costocervical. Costo is rib, cervical is neck. So I look at this little tube right here, and I can see there's a branch that's headed off to the neck and another branch that's coming down toward the ribs. So the name, again, is very descriptive of what it is. Um, you're going to see trunk from time to time in this. Trunk is kind of a word that can replace the word artery. Like if I say costocervical trunk, I don't have to say costocervical trunk artery. In, in medical and anatomical situations, when we hear the word trunk, we automatically think artery. And every one of these is arteries. If you see this page and you're writing an answer on a test or something, you're always writing the word artery with one of these. About the only one that you don't would be one that says trunk or if it just says aorta. You don't have to write aorta artery. Everyone knows the aorta is an artery. Okay? All right, so costocervical trunk. So just two new ones here. The, the third one up there, coronary. When you hear the word coronary, what do you think? Heart, don't you? Oh, I'm going to have a coronary, right? People often say that instead of a heart attack. You should always recognize when you hear the word coronary that we're talking about the heart. So there are coronary arteries. Let's highlight those. Yep. There's the, there's the other side. But let's, let's do the coronaries now. Coronaries are right here. They're very small in the picture, right? You see two little branches, but they're technically the very first branches of the aorta. And it might make sense that the heart is pumping blood into the aorta, and the first place for that blood to go is back to the heart to bring nutrients and oxygen to the heart itself. If I put the heart in this diagram one more time, can you see the coronary arteries here? Right? They were coming out right at the base here, and here they are coming down over the surface of the heart, bringing the heart oxygenated blood. So the heart turns out is pretty self-serving, isn't it? It's pumping blood so that itself gets oxygen. Okay, so two little coronary arteries. So we only have three new ones here now, don't we? All right? There's basically six that you need to know if you're looking at the aortic arch. Three are ones that we did with the upper limb, and three are brand new. So that's good news. Now, as we come down, as the aorta turns and descends, it's now thoracic aorta. And let's take and let's just focus then on just the thoracic aorta here, okay? 
from the lower part of the arch down through the thoracic cavity. Just three to learn, right? Now these are brand new. We don't cross anything out here. Nothing's a repeat in this area. But let's see if we can understand that. Let's take all the others out of here and let's focus on this thoracic aorta. In fact, I think we'll just look here and say, well, why? What, what would be this thoracic aorta? If it was sending branches, where would it send branches? Would it send branches to the heart? The heart is right here in the thorax, yes? No, because we already sent branches to the heart, right? In the aortic arch. So we wouldn't find branches to the heart here. I'm trying to make sense out of this. What else, what are the other big organs here in the thoracic cavity? The lungs, right? But we're not going to send blood to the lungs. The lungs have a very special circulating pattern. In our next unit, when we talk about the maintenance systems, you're going to see that pattern. Okay? So what, what other organs are there here in the thoracic cavity? What other structures do we need to put blood to? Well, it's these three right here. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. Posterior intercostal, what do you think that sounds like? Something, right, something in the back and between the ribs. And if you look closely in here, okay, if we do the posterior intercostals, you'll see these separate little arteries, one for each rib. Okay, there's many, many, many of them in the picture. They're all like letter D, is it? No, letter K. So there are many, many, many little blood vessels, one for each rib space. Those are the posterior intercostal arteries. So that takes care of feeding the muscles and the bones that form the body wall. Now the other two organs that are here are the two tubes, the food tube and the breathing, breathing tube. The esophageal arteries are the ones that feed the esophagus. And here's the esophagus illustrated. It's kind of behind. I colored it in so that you could see it. But in the picture, it's covered by the aortic arch and some of the other stuff. But if you can see where the esophagus is, any of the little branches that are going to the esophagus are the esophageal arteries. And then in front of that is the trachea. And the trachea is actually going to have branches to it that are called bronchial because when you get down to the end of the trachea, it divides into the two bronchi. And in the picture, you'll see the little, the aortic arch is again covering this mostly. But you see right there little bronchial arteries. Okay, bronchial arteries. Okay, how are we doing? We okay with that? Okay. So thoracic aortic arch, we had three new ones there, three ones that were repeats. Here we have three new ones. Now let's go to the third segment of the aorta. The third segment of the aorta is called the abdominal aorta. And the abdominal aorta has just, the aorta's just come through the diaphragm. Um, in the picture here, if you look closely, right above the letter L, you'll see aortic hiatus, right? An opening in the diaphragm where the aorta comes through. And this is still descending aorta, but we call it abdominal aorta in this location. So let's, let's put in, let's color in the abdominal aorta. In fact, very, very smart for you to have coloring pencils or whatever and, and be coloring things in so they stand out to you. So there's, there's the abdominal aorta, and these are the branches then that are connected to the abdominal aorta. Um, this is an awful lot to study all at once. Let me give you a suggestion about how you might divide this up. One way to divide it up is to think that most of these arteries are going to organs in here. And there are two kinds of organs here. And I want to first focus on the organs that are paired, okay? So let's think about paired organs. What I mean is 
This is an organ where there's a right one and a left one. Like, uh, do you have a right and left stomach? No. So we're obviously not talking about that. What would be some organs that you have two of? Okay. Two of them that show really nicely here, right? Your kidneys. Got a right and left kidney. Um, ladies, how many ovaries do you have? You have two, right? So we're going to focus there. So let's, let's look. There's only three blood vessels here that are going to the right and the left. And let's put them in. The renal is one, right? The little renal arteries there are running over to the kidneys. All right? Whenever you hear the word renal, you should think of the organ called the kidney. Um, all the way down in this area, we just described, remember the posterior intercostal arteries, one for each rib? They're very nicely spaced. When you get into the lumbar area here, you have these little lumbar arteries that are nice and evenly spaced down through the abdominal area. We ran out of ribs, so we can't call them intercostals, but they're still regularly spaced there. So you see all these little S's. And then the third one here is the testicular ovarian, and that's this artery running right down here, okay, toward the, the pelvic cavity or out toward the testes of the male. And in reality, you would just use one word or the other. You, you wouldn't use both. You'd either use, if it was a male, you'd call this artery the testicular artery. If it was a female, you'd call it the ovarian artery. But if you learn these three together, you're learning the ones that have both right and left branches. And that makes things a bit simple. So here, your testicular ovarian, those are going off to your ovary or your testes. Now, if there's ones with paired organs, okay, which are these three right here, there are also some branches that go to single organs, and these arteries are individual ones. You don't have a right one and a left one. You just have one of each. And let's highlight those. And there's, again, three. I don't know what there is about all of this study, but when you study these blood vessels, everything seems to be falling into groups of three. So the first one here is a celiac trunk. You don't have to say celiac trunk artery. A trunk artery is one that's typically not very long and then produces all these branches to it. Whenever you've got a, a short sort of artery that has branches, we call it a trunk. So here's a celiac trunk. Notice there's just one of them. Way high up, right where it comes out from under the, the uh, diaphragm. Then the second one is right below it called the superior mesenteric, superior mesenteric. Notice it's just one. It's coming straight forward. And then the third one is below that, a little farther down. It's called the inferior mesenteric. So if I was doing this as a student, I would study those three together because they have something in common. They're each single arteries, and they go to the single organs. What are some single organs? Stomach. What else do you have one of? Liver, one liver. One small intestine. One large intestine. One spleen, one pancreas, right? All of these organs that are out in the cavity itself, not sandwiched back into the back of the cavity, but that are hanging out in the cavity, there's one of each. And these three arteries feed all of those organs. I think that's pretty amazing. There's so many organs, but there's just three major arteries for those. Okay? Highlight, you might want to highlight or underline the word mesenteric here. Remember what this is referring to? Do you remember what the mesentery is? Last week's dissection. Remember? What? Yeah, remember, remember when we spread out the small intestine, we saw that transparent membrane that was holding it in place? That membrane, which is actually part of the peritoneum, the serous membrane, that membrane 
right, is what holds the intestines. And so the word mesenteric here has been used for blood vessels that are going to the intestines. Okay, the last thing that you want to do with this then is look at the trunk branches. Okay, the trunk branches. We got three that were paired. We have three that are single. But then notice that the celiac trunk, okay, from the abdominal organ or aorta, the celiac trunk has how many branches? Three. Okay, three, three. If you take these nine, actually ten with the common iliac, if you take these nine and go three by three by three, right? We're eating an elephant, right? You don't swallow it whole the night before the test. Bite it off little by little. So three trunk branches. Now these branches, the two mesenteric arteries are going to all the intestines, which are in the lower area, what are the three major organs in the upper part of the abdominal cavity? The liver, the stomach, and the spleen, okay? Those are the three major organs. Do you know the anatomical words for each of those? All right, let's, let's look at the names of the branches of the celiac trunk. Left gastric, what is gastric? Stomach, right? So, see the branch from the celiac trunk that's heading off to where the stomach would be located. Okay? Splenic. It's got to be spleen, right? And then here's the branch going off to the spleen. And where's the liver located? Over there. So I th see the third branch, common hepatic, is branching over toward the liver. All the common word tells us it's going to split into two at some point. But you should recognize the word gastric for stomach, splenic for spleen, and the term hepatic always refers to liver. If somebody has hepatitis, that disease is where? Yeah, in their liver. And that's a dangerous place to have a disease because the liver is supposed to take care of your blood chemistry. And if it doesn't, if it's damaged so that it can't, you're not long for this world. You've got to have a liver. So it's, it's fairly simple to understand the celiac trunk. And please use your brain to understand how these words refer. And then you just look at the tubes and see which direction they're going. Most of these blood vessels are named for their destination. Some are named for where they're located, like an abdominal aorta or a thoracic aorta. That's kind of where they are. But many of these branches are named for where they go. If it's gastric, it's going to the stomach. Okay? So, in terms of this whole page now, we've divided into three. Within those sections, we've gone three by three by three. Right? And now we should have been able to process and little by little learn all of the arteries on this page. If you write the name of any of these, you write the word artery next to it. How are we doing? Are we okay? Now understand when you've done this much work, okay, it's basically, if I think it over, of the new things you have to learn, it's five groups of three. Fifteen things. Can you learn fifteen things? Yeah. When you do that, you've got 75% of your work done on all these pages. Okay, that's good news. You're going to be reviewing some of this on other pages and learning a few new things, but these are the basic names for most of what we're going to learn. Now, let's go to a second page. Keep this one handy and put page 74 right next to it now in front of you. Put them side by side. And let's go to page 74. This is titled Abdominal Arteries. Now the good news here is that some of what we're looking at here is review, if you've learned the other page already. Now let me show you how that works here. Um, if you 
look at this page, you see aorta there. These are basically the arteries that are going to the single organs. And the purpose of this is to show you branches from these three. Some of the branches you already know. If I look at the groups here, how many groups are there of terms on this page? How many groups of terms? One, two, three. So I'm back to three again. Now these, these are the branches going to the single organs. These happen to be basically what we would call digestive organs. And what are the three branches to these? We've already learned these. Okay. If you look at your handout, look up in the upper right-hand corner of your handout. See this little diagram? This kind of gives you the big picture, right? If I look at the entire abdominal cavity, notice that this upper region here is all fed by the celiac trunk, right? All this area over down below and to the right is fed by the superior mesenteric, and most of this area over to the left is fed by the um, inferior mesenteric. If you take your hand out here and you were to color it in just generally, this is how you would color it. The celiac trunk would be covering all of this area up here, superior mesenteric down to the right, and inferior mesenteric down to the left. Okay? So, here's, here's how I would color that in if I was doing that. I guess I had an extra page in there that we didn't need. Right, here's celiac trunk. Right, here's superior mesenteric, basically over on this side. And then think of inferior mesenteric over this direction over here. Now, if you can get that basic layout straight in your mind, then everything will fit where it belongs. Let's start with a celiac trunk and see what this looks like now. Let's just focus on this one section. Okay? So I've enlarged this right here in the center, the little red part here. There's the little short celiac trunk. Now we're going to take some of these out. Let's line out four of these. Let's make this simpler, okay? So cross out those four in your handout. And right away, if you look closely, you'll see some repeats here, won't you? The three branches of the celiac trunk we just named on the aorta page Let's put those in again. Here is the um, liver, the stomach, and the spleen in the picture, right? And so I've got branches to each of these. Here's my hepatic. Remember the common hepatic comes over like this to the liver. Again, if you can see it in the picture, this is... <coughs> The picture gives you as much information as anything else. The splenic, right, is the one in the picture that goes this direction over to the spleen. And then the one called left gastric, notice it comes this direction. It goes to the left and circles partway around the lesser curvature of the stomach. Remember that? Lesser curvature, greater curvature, right? So there are my three branches, the same branches that I just learned on the other page. So how many new ones do I have now to learn? Just two, huh? Okay, there is a, well, let me expand just for a second on the hepatic first since it's at the top. Notice that the common hepatic branches into a right and left hepatic. See, and they're actually using a C1 and a C2 Look closely at your picture. Here's the left one, right? And simply, if you know left from right, there's left hepatic, and then there's right hepatic, right? So those are branching into both sides of the liver. Now, the other two that you need to learn here are right gastric, and you can see there's an artery then that 
branches from the hepatic. Since right gastric is listed under hepatic, that's telling me that it's branching from the hepatic, common hepatic artery, and it's making the other part of the circle here on the inside curvature of the stomach. So those two together are feeding blood down into the lesser curvature area of the stomach. The other one on the handout, cystic, right here, is the one that's going over to this green organ right here, this pouch. Remember, that's the gallbladder, okay? And so the little artery that's feeding into the gallbladder is called cystic. Uh, a cyst is a word that's commonly used in anatomy and medical science for a pouch-like structure. That can be anything. You can have all sorts of cysts in your body. Um, but the term basically means a pouch, and the gallbladder is shaped like this. So the artery, main artery to the gallbladder is called cystic. Okay? So the two off the common hepatic are new, and then right gastric and cystic are new. So there's the upper part okay, of this area. Let's look at the superior mesenteric. Now, here you can cross out one, cross out that big, can you say that word? <laughs> that's all, that's hyphenated, it's all one word. Pancreaticoduodenal, okay, pancreaticoduodenal, which is obviously the pancreas and the duodenum, but we're, we're going to cross that one out for now. Um, with the superior mesenteric, if you color it in, here it is, right? It's running down, and notice how it's bending slightly to the right. That's important, because we want to think of the superior mesenteric to the right. But before we do that, one very important thing. Notice that right here is the branches to the small intestine. And if you look at the picture here, there's many of them. See right in here? Do, 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 do. And your small intestine would be all through here. Notice in the picture they've taken the small intestine out because they want to show you all the branching of the blood vessels here. But do you, remember, do you remember the cat last week? Right? Remember when we took and we spread out the mesentery here and you could see all those branches? That's all these little branches here. This thing goes kind of more in a circle and spreads branches to all of the small intestine. So superior mesenteric, this is the one very important thing to remember. All of the small intestine is fed by superior mesenteric. Now, when we're talking intestine, everything else in this area is going to be colon. The colon is spread out all over the place, isn't it? So we're going to have many, many branches, and the colon is larger, so it's going to need more blood. So if you look here... Do you see the same word here over and over again? Right? All the ones that we're going to, these other three that we're going to look at beside the small intestine all say col colic. What does that refer to? Colon, exactly. Although I've heard people use the word colic before. For the baby. What's, what's up with the baby if it's got colic? Okay. Yeah, the baby's really fussy, right? You really don't know what's wrong, but if the baby's fussy, you know, just rah, 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 and you don't know why. You've changed the diaper. Everything looks clean, so it can't be that. Why is the baby so fussy? Oh, he's colicky, right? And some people think ear, but typically the reason we say colicky is we're referring to the colon, to the large intestine, which is where all of your gas is produced. And if somehow the baby's just got lots of gas and you've, you know, if you've ever been sort of uncomfortable from that, that's basically what people are guessing. It doesn't mean that it's true, but that's what people are guessing. So when you see colic here, it's the adjective of the word colon referring to a certain blood vessel that's going to parts of the colon. Now, the rest of the words over here are fairly easy to interpret. Okay? So let's do these one at a time then. From superior mesenteric, you see there's three colic branches. I'm going to start at the bottom again and work my way up. Iliocolic. Iliocolic. 
This is the iliocolic area, right? Remember what ileum is? Last part of the small intestine. So here's the small intestine coming in and meeting the colon. Here's the cecum down here, right? This is the iliocolic area. So look for a branch from the small intestine, and that's this one right here that's feeding blood down into the iliocolic area. The next one says right colic. If this is the human body, which side of this is the right side? It's this side, okay? And I would have guessed they might have said ascending colic artery or something like that because we call this ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon. But they simply use directional terms. So this artery, look for a branch that's coming out and traveling over to the right side. That's the right colic artery. And then middle colic would probably be, right, the transverse colon up here, right? The one that's between the two sides. And so middle colic is going to be up this way. So I'm looking for a branch, again, coming from superior mesenteric. And it's going through this area and feeding blood up into that transverse colon. So when I think of superior mesenteric artery, I think of all of the small intestine and the right and upper parts of the colon. Guess what this inferior mesenteric is going to then do, right? It's going to do the left side and the lower parts, isn't it? Right side upper here, left side lower over here. Let's do this last part, inferior mesenteric. How many, how many to know here? Three. See, it's three and three and three and three, isn't it? So inferior mesenteric 